Welcome to SR Pharma again. Today we are going to discuss on propagation of action potential. So in our lecture series on action potential, we have discussed about the electrical signal, membrane potential, resting membrane potential, difference between the graded potential and action potential. And in last class, we have talked about generation of action potential. So coming to the action potential. Now action potential are the fundamental units of communication between neurons. So it is the fundamental unit of communication. Action potential is a quick rise and subsequent fall in the membrane potential. Now quick rise means it is nothing but the depolarization phase, depolarization phase and followed by the repolarization phase, repolarization phase. So quick rise and subsequent fall in the membrane potential across a cellular membrane with a characteristic pattern. We know that during the action potential, membrane potential changes at a large so action potential at the brief rapid and large change into the membrane potential why because the resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolt inside and during the action potential it is goes up to plus 30 millivolt inside millivolt inside so this is the large change into the membrane potential so already we have discussed the generation of action potential in our last lecture. You can go through that particular video to understand about the action potential in detail. Generation of action potential. Now action potential in neuron, it is also known as a nerve impulse. So it is nothing but the nerve impulse or spike. Nerve impulse or spike. And action potential as we have told this is the fundamental unit so it is responsible for the signal over long distance over long distance now coming to the propagation of action potential propagation of action potential we know that action potential we signal over long distance and it plays central role in cell to cell communication. So when the action potential generates, how it propagates? After generation, how it propagates? How it sends the signal to the next neuron? Neurons, we are dividing into four zone. Input zone, trigger zone, conducting zone and output zone. Now, dendrite, the dendrite, they receive the signal, they receive the signal from other neurons, from other neurons. So, dendrites receive the signal or we can say that through the dendrites, through the dendrites, neurons receive the signal from other neurons. So, it is trigger zone, it is nothing but the receive signals from other neurons. So this area it is considered as a input zone. This area dendrites are considered as a input zone. It is going into the cell bodies. Then trigger zone trigger zone so axon hillock axon hillock it is known as a trigger zone it is known as a trigger zone axon hillock so why the it is known as a trigger zone because action potential generate in axon hillock so action potential generates in action axon Hillock. So we can say that it is responsible for the initiation, initiation of 
एक्शन पोटेंशियल पोटेंशियल सो एक्शन पोटेंशियल जेनरेट इन द एक्शन हिलक After generation of the axon hillock, it will conduct through the axon. It will conduct through the axon. So what is happening? Let me. What is happening here? After initiation of action potential at the axon hillock, a self perpetuating cycle is initiated. No further triggering event is necessary. That means after generation of the action potential in the axon hillock, it is conducted. It is conducted through the axon. It may be the myelinated neurons or non-myelinated neurons. Myelinated or non-myelinated neurons. This action pot uh, action potential or these signals it is conduct through the axon. and this particular axon area it is known as a conducting zone it is known as a conducting zone so you can say that it is conducting zone conducts action potential in and diminishing fashion and diminishing fashion and this is generally long distance this conduction is for long distance generally this action may be 1 mm or more than 1 m long action may be 1 mm to more than 1 meter long so this conduction is for the long distance it is for the long distance next coming to the axon terminal axon terminal it is known as a output zone it is known as a output zone right it is known as a output zone now why it is known as the output zone because signals action potential or the signal it is reaches to the axon terminals and may release neurotransmitter and may release so in this and may release the neurotransmitter that influences other cell or through the action terminal through the axon terminals the signals is propagating to the next neuron it is propagating to the next neuron so that is the output zone that is the output zone so we can say that impulses conducted automatically throughout the neuron so we have seen that it is conducting automatically throughout the neurons and this mode of conduction this mode of conduction of action potential it is also known as a propagation of impulse propagation of impulse so we know that resting membrane potential resting membrane potential is Minus seventy millivolt. So we can say that inside, clear inside. If we are considering inside, the membrane potential is minus seventy millivolt. When a strong signal reaches the membrane potential, it is rise to the threshold point. My that is minus fifty five. millivolt so it is reaches when a signal if we are considering as a signal it is going to the due to this signal membrane potential reaches to the minus 55 millivolt then what is happening then voltage gated as a result as a result what is happening voltage gated sodium channel clear sodium 
channel will be open it will be open so sodium is coming inside so sodium is coming inside so what will happen so as a result clear so as a result now inside it will be positively charged inside it will be positively charged and it will goes up to plus 30 millivolt it will goes up to plus 30 millivolt so that is now this is the condition clear now this is the condition of this segment if you are considering this segment there is a rise into up to plus 30 millivolt plus 30 millivolt after that it will again repolarization and resting membrane potential it will be attained in the next segment in this condition what is happening into the next segment here it is like that here it is like that here it is like that this action potential it will trigger the next segment to generate another action potential so now in this segment it is coming back into the resting membrane potential it is coming back in the resting membrane potential but as this segment trigger the action potential for the next segment it is the next segment and here is the the positively charged so here now it is the resting condition if you are considering this now here it is the resting condition but in this segment we can find the another action potential another action potential then when another action potential it will generate it will trigger the next segment it will trigger the next segment and then it will be this segment in this segment in this segment there is a generation of action potential so next action potential generating here similarly after generation of action potential that will trigger the next segment clear this will trigger the next segment so it will be now this segment inside it will be positively charged and will get this type of the action potential so this is in the first segment action potential but in that time it was the resting stage in the other condition next in this segment there is action potential but this segment previous segment and next segment there is a resting condition next in this segment there is action potential but next segment there is a resting condition and then in the next segment there is action potential but previous segment there is a resting condition so through this process action potential propagates now propagation of action potential or the conduction of the action potential it is mainly two types first one is the saltatory conduction process and second one is the continuous conduction process now what is mean by the saltatory conduction process saltatory conduction is the propagation we can consider it is a propagation of action potential along with myelinated action along with the myelinated action so in case of the myelinated action they exhibit the saltatory conduction they exhibit the saltatory conduction while the continuous conduction well if we are talking about the continuous conduction continuous conduction the unmyelinated 
plus an an myelinated axon exhibit exhibit continuous conduction or we can say that propagation propagation of action potential along with unmyelinated action along with unmyelinated action it is referred as a continuous conduction this continuous conduction generally in the process of the saltatory conduction it is first that means saltatory conduction is first compared to the continuous conduction process continuous conduction process and continuous conduction continuous conduction it is also known as a contiguous conduction it is also known as a contiguous conduction now we'll see about the saltatory conduction and continuous conduction now coming to the saltatory conduction as we have already told that saltatory conduction it is we can observe this type of the conduction in myelinated action in case of the myelinated action now in the myelinated action if we see here also in the myelinated action we can see that myelin sheath as well as the node of renewal node of renewal now we can see that here if we consider this particular area unmyelinated space clear unmyelinated space this particular area it is almost clear as it is almost one micrometer long one micrometer it is one micrometer long and it contains the voltage gated sodium channel it contains the voltage gated sodium channel as well as the potassium channel but particularly the voltage gated sodium channel so this particular area contains the voltage gated sodium channel as well as the potassium channel flow of ions clear flow of ions through this channel flow of ions through these channels regenerate action potential over and over regenerate action potential over and over now what we can see about uh, in the saltatory conduction now action potential as we have already discussed that action potential it is generates in the action hillock in the action hillock action potential is generates after generation of the action potential in this particular area if you see that this particular area that means the in the node of rainward node of rainward there there will be you can say that this depolarization here you can find the depolarization inside there is a positively charged because sodium is going inside sodium is going inside then saltatory means actually it is the jumping clear it is the jumping but it is in this process it is not actually jumping so what will happen from this area to this area that means in between there is a myelinated if you see about that in this area this is the node of rain, uh, rain river, and this is the myelin, myelin sheet clear it is the myelin sheet is there so what is happening the signals clear these signals transmit passively clear it is transmit passively this is the transmitting the passively or electronic spread it is nothing but the electronic this is the electronic spread and when it is reaches to this particular node of renewal this sodium channel it will be get open and this will be boosted the signal it will be boosted 
node of renewal in the node of renewal action potential regenerates over and over along the action along the action so that is the saltatory conduction now in this process the movement is fast clear in this process the movement is fast nodes of renewal also save energy it is also save energy this node of renewal also save energy for the neurons since the channel only need to be present into the nodes not along with the entire action that means what does it means in the myelin sheet area this myelin sheet area there is a no presence of the voltage gated sodium channel it is voltage gated sodium channel as well as the potassium channel it is present into the node of renewal so node of renewal also save the energy for the neurons neurons since this channels since the channel this channel are only need to be present at the nodes but not into the entire region entire region now coming to the continuous or contiguous conduction continuous or contiguous conduction this is we can observe this type of the conduction in the unmyelinated unmyelinated neurons unmyelinated neurons so what is happening in that it is the step by step depolarization we can see that here it is the step by step depolarization step by step depolarization that means first segment as we have discussed earlier this segment it is depolarized but at the same time it is into the resting membrane potential resting membrane potential next so it is depolarized so it is depolarized means it is nothing but the action potential clear action potential generate this action potential it will trigger the action potential into the next into the next phase clear it is the next phase and then this first stage it will be in the repolarizing stage and later st uh, segment it will it will be in the resting stage clear next is this segment so if you are considering one two three segment so second segment it will trigger the third trigger the third segment so action potential it is generates and second segment it will be the repolarizing and first segment it is the in the resting stage so here we have the same thing it was written the response to a signal soma end of the action become depolarized depolarization spread down through the action we can see that it is the continuous manner and action potential continue to travel down the action clear action now in this type in this particular type ion flow clear ion flow there is the uh, uh, flow as there is a voltage gated channel in each segment so each uh, segment there is a voltage gated channel that's why you can say that each segment can depolarized and it can be repolarized it can be repolarized so there is a, in the each segment there is a voltage gated ion channels are present now this type of the conduction it is also seen into the muscle fiber so this is all about the propagation of action potential so in a nutshell we can see that through the nucleus it will get the input through the input zone then into the action hillock that there is a initiation of the action potential then through the conducting zone action potential propagates through the action and which is mainly two type this conduction it is mainly two type one is the saltatory clear one is the 
saltatory conduction another is the continuous conduction saltatory conduction saltatory conduction and another is the continuous conduction saltatory conduction we can observe in case of the myelinated action and continuous conduction in case of the unmyelinated action and action terminals it is act as a output zone clear output zone and this signal is trigger the next neuron or send the information to the next neurons all responsible for the release of neurotransmitter so this is all about the propagation of action potential so this is the attribution and references hope you have understood about the propagation of action potential if you have any doubt you can write us thank you for your support